This presentation will provide you with an overview of the In-Home Supportive Services Program, or IHSS, and the expedited application process. The IHSS program helps pay for services provided to aged, blind, and or disabled individuals, so they may remain safely in their own homes. IHSS is considered an alternative to costly out-of-home care, such as a nursing home or boarding care facility. Types of authorized services include health and safety-related services, such as personal care and domestic services. IHSS does not pay for comfort-related services, such as friendly visits and pet care. IHSS provides up to 25 different services to recipients depending on the needs of the recipient. Examples of these services include, but are not limited to, personal care services such as feeding, dressing, bathing, oral hygiene and grooming, bowel and bladder care, rubbing skin and repositioning, transfer, ambulation, domestic and related services such as housework, laundry, food shopping, meal preparation, and cleanup. Other services such as accompaniment to medical appointments and protective supervision. Protective supervision is available for observing the behavior of recipients who are mentally impaired or mentally ill and non-self-directing. There must be a need for 24-hour-a-day supervision. Note, IHSS does not pay for 24-hour care. And paramedical services. Paramedical services are services that include the administration of medication, puncturing the skin, or inserting a medical device into a body orifice, or other activities requiring judgment based on training given by a licensed healthcare professional. Examples include, but are not limited to, blood sugar checks, injection, ostomy irrigation, and tube feeding. To receive IHSS, individuals must meet the following criteria. Be age 65 or older, blind or disabled. Disabled children may qualify for IHSS. Either receive SSI-SSP or meet SSI-SSP criteria, except for income or citizenship immigration status. And pay a share of cost for Medi-Cal and IHSS. If income is above SSI-SSP limits, not exceed personal property limits, which are $130,000 for an individual and $195,000 for a couple. As property limits are subject to change, please check the DPSS website for more information. And complete a Medi-Cal eligibility determination or redetermination. IHSS applicants who have not completed a Medi-Cal eligibility determination or redetermination will be referred to a Medi-Cal office, and that office will mail them a Medi-Cal application. Applicants can also apply for Medi-Cal by calling the Department of Public Social Services or DPSS Customer Service Center at 866-613-3777 or online at BenefitsCal.com. Applicants must return the completed Medi-Cal application and comply with the Medi-Cal application process, otherwise they will be denied IHSS. Also, meet residency requirements, which include being a California resident and living in one's own home that is not a nursing home or other out-of-home care facility. Submit a healthcare certification form SOC873 or alternative documentation, which is completed by a licensed healthcare professional, 
and indicates the IHSS applicant is unable to independently perform some activity of daily living and without IHSS would be at risk for placement in out-of-home care. The SOC 873 or alternative documentation must be dated within 60 days of the IHSS application date. As previously mentioned, to be eligible for IHSS, applicants must live in their own home. For the purposes of IHSS, one's own home is defined as the place in which the individual chooses to reside and does not include an acute care hospital, skilled nursing facility, intermediate care facility, community care facility, or a board and care facility. Certain alternative living arrangements may fall under the definition of own home, such as a recreational vehicle or RV. RVs must have all the utilities needed to provide IHSS in a safe manner, such as running water, electricity, gas, appliances for food preparation and storage, restrooms, and cannot be relocated each day. A hotel or motel, the home of a family member or friend, a homeless shelter or transitional interim housing, the shelter or transitional interim housing facility management must allow the IHSS social worker to enter to conduct an assessment and allow the IHSS provider to enter and provide services. The applicant must live in the home for the length of time required for the IHSS social worker to conduct an assessment and the IHSS provider to deliver authorized services. Individuals who currently reside in interim housing with immediate plans to move into permanent housing may apply for IHSS, have an IHSS assessment completed, and have services authorized prior to their move into permanent housing. The expedited application process is as follows. When an interim housing provider identifies a client's need for IHSS, the interim housing provider liaison sends the expedited application referral form and the healthcare certification SOC 873 or alternative documentation to DPSS via secure fax at 562-222-2827. The referral form can be sent to DPSS without the SOC 873. However, the completed SOC 873 or alternative documentation must be submitted before IHSS can be approved. The SOC 873 form can be found on the California Department of Social Services or CDSS website at cdss.ca.gov slash info resources slash forms dash brochures. Within two work days of the IHSS application date, an IHSS social worker will conduct an initial needs assessment at the applicant's interim housing location. If the applicant is not available within two work days of the application date, then the appointment is scheduled as soon as possible upon the applicant's availability. 
During the initial assessment, the IHSS social worker will assess the types of services that the applicant needs based on their functional abilities and limitations, and then authorize an amount of time for each service. IHSS may be authorized while the applicant is in interim housing if they need IHSS at this location and have complied with all the requirements. If IHSS is not authorized at this location, it may be authorized once the applicant moves into permanent housing if all the requirements have been met. When the applicant moves from interim to permanent housing, they must immediately call their assigned IHSS social worker to report the address change. Within five workdays after the applicant reported his or her move into permanent housing, the IHSS social worker will conduct a follow-up assessment at the permanent housing location. The follow-up assessment may be conducted after five workdays if mutually agreed upon between the applicant and the IHSS social worker. The social worker needs to reassess the applicant's condition and service hours because circumstances may have changed since the applicant moved into permanent housing. For example, the applicant's condition may have improved or deteriorated, or the applicant may be sharing rooms with fewer or more people, in which case authorized hours for housework may need to be adjusted. Within 10 workdays of the follow-up assessment, the IHSS social worker will complete the assessment of the applicant's need for services. The applicant will be notified of authorized services and hours and any adjustments made via written notice of action or NOAA. If the applicant or recipient is no longer eligible after moving into permanent housing, IHSS will be denied or terminated, and a denial or termination NOAA will be mailed to the applicant or recipient. The denial or termination NOAA will give the reason for the denial or termination and explain how to dispute it. Upon approval of IHSS, the recipient must hire an IHSS provider to perform the authorized IHSS services. The recipient, as the employer, is responsible for hiring, training, supervising, and if necessary, firing their IHSS provider. IHSS is a self-directing program, so the recipient must be able to direct their own care or have a legal representative or an authorized representative who can act on their behalf. To designate an authorized representative, the applicant or recipient must complete the IHSS Designation of Authorized Representative form. SOC 839 and submit it to their IHSS social worker. The SOC 839 form can be requested from the IHSS helpline or can be found on the CDSS website at cdss.ca.gov slash info resources slash forms dash brochures. Who can be an IHSS provider? Any individual who completes the state-mandated IHSS provider enrollment process. This may include a family member, a friend, or someone from the provider registry that is operated by the Personal Assistance Service Council, PASC the public authority for IHSS in Los Angeles County. Providers on this registry are available for immediate hire. PASC can be reached at 877-565-4477. The state-mandated IHSS provider enrollment process is as follows. Step 1. 
Complete IHSS Provider Orientation. Step 2. Complete the IHSS Program Provider Enrollment Form, SOC 426. Step 3. Submit an unexpired government-issued photo ID and Social Security card. Step 4. Complete the IHSS Program Provider Enrollment Agreement Form, SOC 846, and Step 5. Undergo and pass a criminal background check. Providers who fail the criminal background check may be able to become an IHSS provider if the criminal offense was not elder abuse, child abuse, dependent adult abuse, or government health care or social services fraud and the recipient signs a waiver acknowledging they are aware of the felony conviction and still wish to hire the provider. Before an IHSS provider can be paid to work for a recipient, the recipient must submit a completed IHSS program recipient designation of provider form, SOC426A, or assign the provider to their case using the Electronic Services Portal, or ESP, at www.etimesheets.ihss.ca.gov. Note, recipients who hire their provider using the ESP do not need to complete and submit an SOC-426A. The social worker will bring the SOC-426A to the initial needs assessment, but the recipient can also request it from the DPSS-IHSS helpline at 888-822-9622 or find it on the CDSS website at cdss.ca.gov slash Info resources slash forms dash brochures. To receive payment for providing IHSS services, IHSS providers must submit semi monthly timesheets and have them approved by their recipient. Due to the implementation of the federally mandated electronic visit verification, providers and recipients must. Submit, review, approve, and reject IHSS timesheets electronically or telephonically. This replaces the paper timesheet process. For the electronic timesheet option, providers and recipients need to register for an account on the ESP at www.etimesheets.com. Dot .ihss.ca.gov dot dot For the telephonic option, providers can call the Telephone Timesheet System or TTS at 866-376-7066 to enter and submit their hours. Recipients who use TTS receive a phone call when their provider submits a timesheet. Paychecks are sent from the state via mail or direct deposit. IHSS providers are required to enroll in direct deposit or set up a pay card account to receive IHSS payments. Providers can enroll in direct deposit using the ESP or call the IHSS service desk to request a provider direct deposit enrollment change cancellation form, the SOC 829 at 866-376-7066, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Payments may include overtime, travel time, and or paid sick leave. To submit an expedited application referral, Interim housing provider liaisons must send a referral form and 
SOC873, if available, to DPSS via secure fax at 562-222-2827. IHSS policy inquiries may be emailed to IHSS policy inquiry at dpss.lacounty.gov. For help with a specific IHSS case or to enroll an IHSS provider, call the IHSS helpline at 888-822-9622, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit the DPSS website, dpss.lacounty.gov, to view important announcements, informational What is IHSS videos, and other IHSS resources. For IHSS provider registry services and information on free trainings for recipients and providers, call PASC at 877-565-4477. For assistance with ESP or TTS, Call the CDSS IHSS Service Desk at 866-376-7066.